I first went to the griot not even intending to do a story, but because I'd never been there. I saw that it was something different that you don't see at a lot of museums. We wanted to make sure we got the stories out that uh, helped people understand how St. Louis and Missouri and our region was connected to the larger national stories. I saw that maybe people need to know about this place. And from there she did the story, um, which was great, because it, in a sense it talked about how bad we were, how awful we looked, how what uh, serious trouble we were in. But it also gave us an opportunity to reach out to a public that we probably would not have reached uh, otherwise. Um, and as a result of that, we started to get some, some calls. We got a few more visitors. We got a few more members, uh, some volunteers. Um, and, it, and it was very helpful to us at that time. Yeah, it's, it's very rewarding to work somewhere where stories that make a difference are green-lighted, that ideas um, to you know, bring voices to people that may not have a voice and to shine a light on you know, institutions like the GRIO or others or other people who are making a difference but they're not getting that, you know, that news coverage you know, that more prominent people and organizations are getting. And, and I, you know, I love that I can do that. During the Stockley Verdict protests, I was tweeting uh, resources that I was finding. I was tweeting the questions that I was asking for the 1A podcast. So I tweeted about how we were listening to the 1A podcast uh, that had Jason Rosenbaum on it. I got a Facebook message, actually, from someone at the station that said, hey, uh, Jason saw your tweets and he really liked it and he'd love to come to your class. And I was like, you know, we are doing our unit on the role of media in a democracy next week. And he was willing to drop everything and come to us. It was amazing, you know. So my students learned not only about the Stockley verdict, how to understand that phenomenon, but they also got to talk to him as a political reporter. When he came to our classroom, that was really interesting. It kind of brings the story to life. He gave you us some advice and like what it takes to become a reporter. I thought it was really cool to see how the textbook material applies to real life. Does he think about the responsibility to create media that we can all trust so that we're empowered to make our decisions as citizens in a society? Well, the name of the program is St. Louis on the Air, and what we're trying to do is clearly reflect the kinds of things that are going on in this community, the kinds of things that make this community stronger. We also have a lot of things that uh, we're proud of and can boast about, and we'd like to do that too. Books and Bros is a business slash book club where you get to read about African-American literature, but we mainly focus on African-American literature and the boys ages seven to 13. But this was a very compelling story about a young man, not even a teenager yet, who was committed to, to teaching uh, his young peers, basically African-American youngsters, uh, the joys and the value of reading. And basically we had the interview with St. Louis Public Radio. All of these media outlets were basically like re posting and sharing the interview with St. Louis Public Radio. This is very rewarding to us to be able to present someone like this uh, and let the community know that there are kids out there and people out there who are doing their darndest, even at a very young age, to make this community a better place. My name is Julio Segarra Bayon. I'm a sustaining member of St. Louis Public Radio. I own ZB Market, which is a retail operation. It's a small business, and we sell unique handcrafted and fair trade gifts from around the world. The more I listen to public radio, the more I find myself being smarter and being able to articulate what I want to say in, an, in front of people, whether it's a local um, event, whether it's national news or international events. And the more I listen to, to uh, St. Louis Public Radio, the more I'm prepared to have a, a debate, an argument, and, and um, present a point of view that I would not have been able to get otherwise. If the topic that is being covered is sort of controversial or is highly debatable, you have a chance to listen to NPR and you get both sides of the story. So as a listener, I'm really arming myself with the argument from both sides, and that helps me articulate my point of view. 
We're growing community support as support from the government shrinks. In fact, in 2017, St. Louis Public Radio was able to increase giving from individual donors by 17% with support from more than 25,000 member households. In total, 93% of our operating budget, about $8 million, comes from individuals, corporations, and foundations, with very little coming from traditional sources, from uh, the government, both federal and state sources. Today, the station receives less than 7% of its operating funds from the federally funded Corporation for Public Broadcasting. We know that unbiased, influence-free reporting is foundational to a strong and thriving region and that St. Louis Public Radio must continue to lead in distributing content through new and emerging technologies and digital formats. Service to our community is the sole focus of our work, and with the continued help of our generous donors, we will remain an essential community resource for the generations to come.